our service begins in the middle of page three in the service bulletin. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our lesson. Job 23, 1 through 9, 16 through 17. The must buys it a job, longs for divine court from which he might seek redress and justice. A reading from the book of Job. Job, sorry. Job said, today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would lean what he would answer me and understood what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward. I cannot perceive him. On the left he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If I could only vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Okay. The response. Psalm 22, 1 through 15. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime but you do not answer by night as well. But I feel no rest, yet you were the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises in Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scanned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh for me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him, let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are, you took me out the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been trusting you since I was born. 
you were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Basham surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bo bones are on a joint. My heart with my breast is wilting next. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Lord, Jesus As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Uh, did anybody hear about the question the husband asked his wife? show off. He said, honey, am I your only one? And she thought for a minute and she replied, yes, all the others have been nines and tens. Uh, 
Okay, the man in Tennessee was driving on Interstate 65 between Nashville and Bowling Green and his pickup truck broke down and he pulled off to the side of the road and he was collecting flowers and putting them in front of the back of his truck. And a highway patrolman came up and said, what are you doing with those flowers? And he said, I don't know, but it said put flowers in front of your truck if you break down. Thank you, Hank. I can keep going. Somebody's going to have to laugh. Ultimately, the gospel this morning is about stewardship. It's about utilizing all the gifts and resources God has given us for the glory of God and the care and welfare of all God's creation. It's putting the needs of others before our wants. It's living our lives in service to and for others and as mirrors of God's love and mercy given to us. It's the opportunity to start every day anew in our role as stewards. Jesus asked the man, let's call him Rupert, to do this, and he can't. Every Sunday morning at our 715 service, we say the following at the offertory. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Rupert has completely forgotten this. Everything he has earned or inherited, and we aren't told how he accumulates his wealth, is his. He has forgotten that all he has comes from God. He has forgotten, to use a term current today, to pay it forward in service of others and in love of God. All he cares about is himself. In the time of the Old and New Testaments, conspicuous wealth was believed to be a clear indication of God's blessing. Because you have been favored by God, you are successful. Poor, unfavored. Deaf or blind, unfavored. This is why the disciples have such a hard time understanding what Jesus tells Rupert that he must do, why he must give away everything that their culture indicates he's been blessed by God. Then who can be saved, they ask. For Peter, our beloved human Peter, it brings out all his insecurities. We've left everything to follow you. Promise us we're going to be okay. Jesus does. Continuing to teach them that stewardship of this world and their faithfulness to God will create their rewards here and lead them into the love and warmth of eternal life with God. All because they will return to God the gifts they've received by making the last first and the first last. Whether it's bringing someone isolated by demons back into community or in a completely male-dominated society protecting and forgiving a woman about to be stoned for adultery or healing a disabled person who's been shoved aside by everybody else for years trying to get into a sacred pool to be healed or by seeing how God can bring us back to life when we feel so dead inside. The commandments about which Jesus asked Rupert are those which instruct us about how to live in community, how to live with each other. Rupert says he has followed them all his life. However, because his focus is entirely on himself, he can't give up those things which define him which are society's indications of how blessed he is. And yet, he obviously has questions about this because he's run to Jesus and he's knelt before him. Jesus tells him that it's not wealth, not appearance, not social status or power that matters. What does matter is being of service to God and to others. The only way for Rupert to get there is to, is to unpack and discard those things which give him status in his mind and in the minds of others. He must practice stewardship if he's to receive it. Every perfect gift is from above. 
Jesus tries lovingly to get Rupert started on this journey into stewardship. Do the hardest thing imaginable, he says. Give up all those things which define you here. Take on those things which will make you an outcast in the eyes of those you know and whose admiration and envy you enjoy. Jesus tries to tell Rupert that what he is seeking, eternal life, is the complete reversal of the life he leads and the life where culture and society ascribe him honor and renown, giving freely to others, not holding for himself, letting go of wealth so that his heart can be truly open, letting go of his ego so that he is totally open to God. It is simply the reprioritization of his entire life. Rupert can't accept this new reality. He can't allow God to break into his life and to transform it. He has no concept of stewardship in his life or God's stewardship in his. The very first time I spoke with all of you here was about stewardship. And it was on the very first Sunday I was here. October 7th, 2018. Whoever was supposed to talk at the 715 service about stewardship hadn't come. And Javon, bless her, asked me if I could give the talk. I so truly believe that practicing stewardship enlarges and enhances our lives. It makes us uncomfortable. It shouldn't but it does. After all, every perfect gift is from above. Just as Jesus asked Rupert to examine and reprioritize his life by breaking open from those things which have built a chrysalis around him, those things to which he clings, so stewardship asks and enables us to do the same. It's about our time and how we use it for the greater glory of God. It's about all those talents we have and how we use them for the greater glory of God and in the service of others. It's about how we use the wealth we have in in recognition that every perfect gift is from above. There are so many paths for stewardship. For instance, over the past week, I've been called by two men I haven't talked with in one case in six months and another case in three years. They were just calling to check in, to see how I was doing. Great example of stewardship. Here are a few of the paths on the treasure aspect. In the 1980s, a member of this parish, with tears of joy streaming down his cheeks, told us during the stewardship campaign that he and his wife had decided they would give 10% of every contracting job he had to the church. Six years ago, and I love this one, a member of St. Peter's, I was doing an internship there, told everyone that he and his wife had inadvertently slipped into tithing because they kept giving the same amount even though he'd lost his job for six months. And when they were doing the taxes in April, they looked at that and they said, my goodness, look what we did. Isn't that astonishing? Ten years or more ago, Mary Ann and I felt the pull to begin tithing in response to all the blessings we've received. We began our journey, our path, by increasing our giving 1% a year. For the past several years, We've gotten to our goal, and we continue on that path. Serving God through those gifts we've been given is an ongoing process for all of us. We acknowledge that every time we serve community of which we are a part. Stewardship is about the journey of learning to give all we have and all we are to God's glory and to the love of all God's creatures and creation. 
The path we're all on is never smooth or straight. Each of us is on this journey in our own unique way and on our own unique schedule. This is, after all, life, and we are, after all, human. We're human with our flat tires and with our open roads, with our forced detours, and with those marvelously unexpected side trips we decide to make. However, at all times on this journey, we should remember this so purely wonderful and heart-affirming aspect of today's gospel. Jesus, looking at Rupert, loved him. That's all. None of us knows what happens to Rupert after he leaves. We never know when or even if Jesus' stewardship of him will take hold. Yet, maybe tomorrow morning, or next month, or eight years ago on Kalihi Valley Road, right next to the Tesoro Station, he'll be ready to hear, to feel in his heart what Jesus is telling him. Then he'll return, seeking to resort and reorder his life. We do know that our care and our eternal life are in the arms of an ever-loving God who asks only that we stay on the journey of living into those things that are so truly important, being with God and helping others to do the same. Every perfect gift is from above. All things come from you, O Lord, and with joy and gladness do we present them to you. Amen. Please stand and let us join together and say the Nicene Creed, the creed of our faith, which is found on the back cover of the Red Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and <laughs> were the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Christ challenges our comforts and complacencies. 
Let us turn to him in our need, asking God's intervention in our world, saying, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the victims of war, conflict, and violence throughout the world, that they may encounter justice and peace, participating in the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the lost, for the churches and their leaders, that the domination of God might be, dominion of God might be proclaimed in action as well as in word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the lost, the lonely, the isolated, and the ill, that they may receive blessing a hundredfold, leading to the eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For this community gathered in prayer, that we might gain riches by giving ours to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For Christian communities, that the struggle to follow Christ will lead to life eternal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer. Cheryl Seaman, Phil and Gay's Servier, Richard and Sandy Shimon, and their Ohana. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Gay, Hank, Draven, Alita, Peter, Jeff, Christy, Cynthia, George, Sarah, Isa, Isaiah, Deidre, Mackay, Michelle, Reggie, Mike, James and his parents, and Betty Jo, and those we name now, either silently or aloud. Gloria. We pray for journalists from Afghanistan who are in jeopardy of being silenced, detained, and killed for reporting the news in their struggling nation. For all those who have died, especially Gail Bennett, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. God, source of life and fountain of mercy, all things are possible with you. Grant us a share in your eternal life. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as most comfortable for you, let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. And for Thanksgivings, some that I would like to mention, uh, Barbara Sheedy's birthday on the 12th, Kyla Cantillo's also on the 12th, Wayne Wells on the 14th, Rachel Mueller will be 12 um, on the 12th. Is that correct? I think that's right. She'll be 12 on 
The 16th? 16th, there we go. But I've got 12 here because she's turning 12 and she's looking forward to getting vaccinated as I think a whole lot of our cakey are. So um, anybody else have birthdays or anniversaries that they would like to celebrate? The 16th, your grandpa, Ava's grandpa. Okay, all right. Let's do together the community prayer on the bottom of page seven. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we wish people happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaiian. Hanau, aho mai kai. And I also want to mention that uh, Jean Healy's obituary was in the paper this morning. I always check that on Sunday mornings before church. And she passed away several weeks ago, but she, uh, in it, she, uh, it's mentioned that she was a longstanding member of St. Christopher's. I was with her when her husband passed away. I spent many hours with her, did at least one of the daughters, their daughter's funerals. And uh, she had moved on to Oregon to be near family. But another thing that she mentioned was that she was very grateful for the friendship of Paula Sterling, uh, one of our members who is here today. So. Our news is on the yellow sheet, and thank you to everybody who brought pets last week. That was a whole lot of fun, and please, if you weren't here, take a look at it on our Facebook page or on our website, and if you had a pet blessed um, and st still want one of these valuable certificates that say they were blessed, it was blessed. Then there are some in the back, and I think I have one or two with me right here. Next week, we on Saturday at 4.30, we will have a pre-diocesan worship at St. Christopher. That actually should say pre-diocesan convention worship because the next Saturday is our Hawaii Diocese convention and we're having it by zoom this year and that's why each church is asked to have its own special service and it will be like we're all worshiping together the theme of that service will be giving thanks for those who have gone before again that will be 4 30 it'll just be right immediately after education for ministry they'll come from the back and come right up here uh, and all saints sunday on a similar theme November 7th. We will set up a memory table in the back uh, on October 24th, the day after the Halloween concert. We'll need that space for the Halloween concert on the 23rd, and I do hope you'll come uh, to be here for that. Many of our uh, youth and, and other people uh, will play music for us and some will dance and all kinds of things on that Halloween concert on the 23rd. The very next day you may bring pictures of your loved ones. We'll have them on a table. You may list their names also and we will pray for them by name on November 7th. Let's see the yard sale November 20th. Uh, is it still, t can you still buy a table or are all the, ta you can still buy a table at $15? Uh, $10? Sort of maybe depends. Maybe you can barter with Elaine and Joe Relk for your table to sell your wares. 
Um, and if you want to sell some Christmas things, be, uh, you know, be, you are very welcome to do that. Also, on the ends of each of the pews that you are in, uh, the inside end, are some grant applications. We, have pl we give out plenty of money each year to organizations, nonprofit organizations, local, national, international, that uh, are of uh, help to many who need it in various ways. And we invite you to give us the name of an, your favorite nonprofit and maybe a little bit of uh, information about how it does help the community and beyond. Uh, Somebody had been asking me about the church directory. I have the app on my church, uh, on my phone. And the nice thing when you have it on your phone, you can just call it up and if there have been any changes, I know Elizabeth Burton just moved, but you call up the app and it's got her new address right there. So this tells you how to put that uh, app on your phone. And let's see here. Then I also would like Aiden Relk, Alex Relk, and Megan Mueller to come forward, please. They were at an American Guild of Organists competition and they won scholarships which is just like amazing. It's just the Don Conover Scholarship. And each one of them, uh, Megan is, uh, has been at it a bit longer and she won an upper year scholarship. Um, Alex and Aiden won a first year scholarship. We, and they, uh, every one of them, yes, amen. Every one of them, along with Elaine Relk and Ina Young, are playing the piano today. Uh, we have nothing but piano music today in honor of Karen Gifford's gift of the Conover Baby Grand Piano. So yes, uh, Karen Gifford, come, come on down. So we know who you are. I was afraid you were home taking care of one of your wayward dogs that was with us last week. It wasn't Carly Sue, because she's great. Um, but there you go. All right, and we thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And if you will come with me to the back, say you bless things by using them and so uh, Alex, Aiden, Megan, Ina, Elaine uh, and us listening to the piano today just a few words of blessing as well. As we, bless, yes, please turn, stand and turn. Yes. As we bless this organ today, may we also bless and remember and celebrate not just those who have played it today, will play it today, but all those who will play it moving forward. Karen learned how to play the piano on this instrument. So uh, if you would join me in the words that are at the top of page eight, they're in bold. It says, the people's response upon request. I now request, <laughs> praise God with the tambourine and rejoice to the sound of pipes. 
praise God with the sound of the trumpet, and praise God with lyre and harp and all musical instruments. Let us pray. O Lord, before whose throne trumpets sound and saints and angels sing the songs of Moses and the Lamb, accept this piano for the worship of your temple, that with the voice of music, we may continue to proclaim your praise and tell it abroad through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. And you, are, you may be seated, and I think you know how, offering, or how communion and offering works. The offering plates are up there as you, as you come up for communion. You'll come up over, uh, through on the sides. There are little uh, crosses that I'm sure you sort of recognize as being kind of things that you use to distance from one another. There's also an offering plate here in the back as well. Um, let us continue to bless the Lord our God. our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing, 
All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave them Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. And send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of our Christ. Granted, we burning with your Spirit's power may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with St. Christopher, King Kamehameha IV, Queen Emma, and all your people into the joy of our eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed, Blessed are, are you, you now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. We take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and we feed on him and in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And again, we will invite you to come up along the side and I will be in the middle. Ava will be helping me, uh, holding the koa bowl. And if you would like, we have been normally uh, in tainting a wafer, the priest will entaint the wafer, lightly dip it uh, with wine, and put it in your hand. There are Kleenex right here, right after, right after you have received. And if you would like to come up for a blessing, also let us know that. Gluten-free is available as well. And yes. If you would not like it in tainted, just let me know, and uh, we can um, oblige that. Okay.
Epule Kako. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Ha, ha, ha.